You're listening to the official podcast of Asbury University, produced by students with God-honoring conversations that inform, edify, and encourage. This is Asbury. We explore culture and current topics through a Christian worldview, promoting a well-balanced life, and we empower our community to belong, become, and be set apart. I'm your host, Abby Lobb. Welcome to This is Asbury. here about being set apart, you know, Christian population in, in media. What is it like at this point in history to be a, a conservative in mainstream media? Well, uh, for me, having done this so many years and, and really being identified as a conservative commenter, which I am, uh, I think a lot of people sort of either have gotten used to the idea that I, I think what I do or they don't think there's much point in trying to uh, convince me otherwise. I'm very lucky that I don't have people uh, pounding on me and saying, oh, how dare you say this, and you're evil and terrible. Uh, I've spoken all around the country. I've never been stopped from speaking, unlike Ann Coulter and uh, Milo Yiannopoulos and other people who've just had their, Heather McDonald had their events shut down. And thankfully, it's knock on wood, not happened to me. I hope it doesn't happen to me. Um, so I think in that sense, people either um, respect me and leave me alone for the most part, or they figure, what's the point in uh, trying to change his mind? It's not going to happen. So I, I, I suffer uh, a lot fewer of the slings and arrows than uh, my uh, brethren and sister, and if that's a word, in, in the conservative commentary have. So I'm, I'm lucky in that sense. We have um, one of the common themes I, I see among journalism students is that they, they're getting to the point where they don't see a place in the profession for them because of their worldview. Can you offer any encouragement to them? That's a good question. I, I can understand the frustration if you're 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, you want to go to the news media, and you see so many people who are even slightly right of center being you know, booted out of newsrooms or not hired or what have you. My advice is stay in the profession, learn to write, learn to do TV, learn to do film, whatever it is you want to do, and as best you can, get it out there. Now, you may or may not succeed in a so-called mainstream news organization. If you do, then power to you. But look, we've got Fox News Channel. We've got Newsmax. We still have some part of OAN, I believe. There are probably news websites that will come along. There are organizations like think tanks that have their own internal communications departments where maybe you're not necessarily with a news outlet per se, but you might be working with, let's say, Cato Institute or the Manhattan Institute, finding local stories of corruption, local stories of excessive regulation. Conversely, people who maybe are beneficiaries of deregulation, beneficiaries of tax reduction, privatization, what have you, and just telling those human stories and telling those examples of either things that have gone wrong that need to be fixed or things that have gone well that we can celebrate. And as best you can, get that information out there. If nothing else, even if you're doing it maybe not at the largest scale that you'd like if you're working at the Washington Post, let's say, but somewhere else, at least you're getting it off your chest and not sitting at home frustrated saying, boy, I really wish I could do something or say say something about this, and you can't. Even if you're doing so with less volume than you'd like, at least you're doing something to get those ideas, that information out into the public debate, at least a little, and that's certainly a lot better than not at all. There's one more question. Given all that you said in your presentation, and I was thinking that one of my selling points to students is that, well, if you want to change the profession, you guys, you students, are the ones who are going to make the editorial decisions and change it if it's going to be changed. Now, am I just being naive? Are we too far beyond the point where it can be changed, or is it still possible? No, you're not naive. We have to do it. It's not going to happen by itself. You know, if we're not there to push the stuff, this stuff isn't going to push itself on its own. It's up to us to do it. And if that means either you're in a news organization, you try to get these stories out as best you can, or for that matter, you join a conservative news site, website, newspaper, a radio program, television program, whatever it is, or frankly, you go start your own organization. I think what we need to do is we need more people starting their own organizations. I'm waiting for somebody to start a, a conservative or right of center, open-minded, whatever term you like, movie studio, not just doing documentaries. We do a lot of documentaries. I'm talking about big two-hour long feature films with actors, actresses, sets, plots, dialogue, special effects, etc. And not even heavy-handed stuff where, oh, here's a conservative movie, and boom, you get smacked over the head with a skillet. You can tell stories that are conservative, right of center, whatever term you want, without being very heavy-handed about it. This goes back quite a few years, but I think Jerry Maguire is both a very free market-oriented and a very conservative even socially conservative movie. I mean, you've got this amazing story about uh, Tom Cruise as a talent agent who basically gets fired from his company. He leaves with his one client, Cuba Gooding Jr., 
and goes about essentially representing him and trying to get him a contract with a football team. And then meanwhile, you've got Renee Zellweger, whose husband has passed away, and she's got this little boy and starts dating Tom Cruise. And she says towards the end of the movie something, which is maybe the most unfeminist thing ever said on the silver screen, which is along the lines of, I'm willing to put up with all of your nonsense so I can have a man to help me raise this boy. Wow. I mean, that sounds like something that could have been written, I don't know, maybe by the faculty at Asbury University <laughs> or something like this. And this is a big Hollywood movie that won lots of awards and sold millions and millions of dollars worth of tickets. There's a movie called Knocked Up that came out some years ago, I think, with Seth Rogen. And he's just this sort of pot-smoking guy who happens to get this woman pregnant. And guess what? She doesn't have an abortion. She decides to have the kid. And he says to himself, well, you know, the kid needs a daddy. I better get my act together. And rather than sitting around and smoking bong hits with his friends, he actually gets a job and cleans himself up. And this is a very socially conservative movie, but it was presented as kind of a crazy, wacky comedy. And at no point they say, oh, the pro-life cause is really important. You know, it's all presented as a comedy. And below that, you've got yourself basically a movie about personal responsibility, a pro-life movie. And in that movie, which people saw, you know, more on the big screen, this, it's old enough where it came out before people started watching stuff on their phones. People were sitting in movie houses and seeing big screen pictures of uh, ultrasound. And you could see the little baby on the ultrasound two or three times when they go to the OBGYN and you see the ultrasound projected on a huge movie screen. And I think a lot of people are, oh, wow, look, it doesn't look like a cuticle. It's not just a pile of cells. It kind of looks like a baby. And I think a lot of people's eyes were opened by that movie, again, which was not a big, heavy-handed, you know, pro-life documentary, but a wacky kind of zany comedy, which very subtly had a message of personal responsibility and pro-life. I'm not even sure if the producers realized that they were producing something that advanced those two ideas uh, as much as they did, but they did do so. And we need more people in the movies and on stage and, and in the music industry and so are helping to get these ideas out. Uh, and very often in ways that are subtle rather than heavy-handed. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of This is Asbury. To learn more about Asbury University, visit asbury.edu.